Hi, Jacob here with the Nature Conservancy of Canada. Today, we're going to show you how to control one of Canada's worst invasive species, Phragmites australis. Phragmites australis, also known as European common reed, invasive Phragmites, or simply Phrag, was first imported from Europe as an ornamental grass. Frag spreads across the landscape in multiple ways, as each plant can produce thousands of seeds every year, multiple plants can root from a single stalk, and new plants can sprout from huge underground root systems. While it can grow on dry land, Frag thrives in wetlands, along shorelines, in roadside ditches, and wet fields quickly destroying crucial habitat for native wildlife and causing headaches for people. The Nature Conservancy of Canada has been helping our partners return thousands of acres of Phragmites infested environments back to pristine wildlife habitat. We are finally winning the battle against Phragmites, but we need your help. Phragmites is famously hard to kill, but Chris and Jordan from our expert invasive species removal team are going to show you how, using commonly available tools and a little bit of elbow grease. Let's go take a look. This might be invasive. Bluey green coloration. The first step is to make sure you're dealing with invasive Phragmites, as there is a desirable native variety that should be left alone. How can you tell the difference? Native frag is often shorter and doesn't crowd out everything around it. By midsummer, native frag has a reddish brown stem and yellowish leaves, while invasive frag has a beige stem and blue green leaves. Telling them apart can be tricky, so if you're unsure, visit the Ontario Invasive Plant Council's website for more help with identification. Looks invasive to me. Yeah. Once you've confirmed you're dealing with invasive frag, there's one last thing to consider before you start control. While frag grows too dense for most wildlife, there is the possibility of nesting birds or spawning fish on the edge of stands. As such, we recommend controlling frag after July 15th to ensure these animals are long gone, but before October 15th to maximize your chances of success. But local conditions may vary, so seek advice if you're concerned about potential impacts to native wildlife while controlling frag. When the time is right to control frag, there are two ways to do it, depending whether it's in the water or on dry land. But before we get started on control, here are the tools you'll need to get the job done. If in deep water, the best tools to use are hand sickles or raspberry cane cutters. Raspberry cane cutters are available through the Invasive Phragmites Control Center, while hand sickles are available at your local hardware store. If you are on water less than 30 centimeters or on dry land, a spade with a sharpened edge works best. You will also need a sled, platform, or garbage bag to collect cut material. To keep safe and comfortable while fragging in water, Chest waders, work gloves, glasses, and sunscreen are recommended. It is also a good idea to wear a life jacket and to work in pairs. It's wise to have a first aid kit and to wear proper footwear, as broken frag stems from previous years can be very sharp. If you aren't wearing waders, rubber boots or water shoes are a great option. To avoid injury, don't go barefoot. Now that we're ready to go, Jordan and Chris will start by demonstrating how to control frag growing in water. The key to cutting frag in water is to cut the stem as close to the lake bed as possible. This essentially just cuts the supply of oxygen off to the plant and prevents photosynthesis. You can use a raspberry cane cutter like this. You take the plant, you slide it along the stem and get as close to the sediment as possible and just essentially cut the plant. You can also use other tools such as a hand sickle like this one and it's just as sharp and just as effective as a raspberry cane cutter. Mm. 
when you're controlling frag on land or in the water, it's very important that you collect all of the cut plant material. Um, even a small piece of frag, such as something like this, or even smaller, can start another patch like what you see here. So when you're controlling, make sure you put all your material in a bag or a floating device like this, a sled, ice fishing sled, something like that, um, to bring it all back to shore. Or you can take some twine and tie them and bundle them up like this to make them easier to handle if you don't have another device to carry it. So that's how you control frag growing in deep water. Now, we'll show you how to control frag growing on dry land and shallow water. When you're cutting frag on land or in shallow water, all you really need is a sharpened spade, some glasses and gloves, and appropriate footwear. The idea here is you approach your stock of frag at a 45 degree angle with your shovel, and you're gonna to need to give it a swift kick at the base of the plant. The idea here is to disturb the soil as little as possible when you're removing the frag. Once the frag is cut, it needs to be disposed of in a way that will prevent further spread. This can be done by putting stalks and seed heads into a thick industrial grade garbage bag. After about two weeks sitting in direct sunlight, the seeds and plant material will no longer be viable and the frag can be burned or disposed of at a landfill. If the frag is cut before seed heads form, as we recommend, there's no real need to bag the cut stems. They can simply be piled on dry ground. Once the plants are thoroughly dried, you can bring them to a landfill or composting facility, or burn them. If you want to burn your frag, ensure that proper safety precautions are taken and local bylaws are followed. You're almost done, but there's one final thing to consider when controlling frag. Be sure to clean off your clothing, especially shoes, as well as any equipment that was used with a mild water and bleach solution. That way, you won't inadvertently spread Phragmites seeds to new sites. And that's it. Keep in mind, you may need to work on a stand for several years before it's fully eliminated. If the infestation is too big to handle by yourself and you are located on the Soggy and Bruce Peninsula in Ontario, contact us by visiting the website listed below. We may be able to arrange free of charge control services. If you're located elsewhere in the province, reach out to your regional Nature Conservancy of Canada office or another local conservation group for information on potential control programs offered in your area. Thank you for helping eliminate one of Canada's most damaging invasive species and for keeping your property healthy for wildlife and future generations.